Hello everyone, this is James Jesso, author of Decomposing the Shadow and host of Adventures Through the Mind podcast. I would like to talk with you today about LSD, in particular, the long-lasting impact of LSD experiences on healthy volunteers according to this study. Let's just put a pause on this for a second. Um, when I made this video, I had just finished reading the study, I was very excited about it, um, and I decided I would just shoot this video right away in the forest and I felt really nervous standing there self-conscious as I do I'm still learning this whole YouTube thing um, and I kind of went in thinking I would just talk about the study and then I went talking pretty deeply about differences between LSD and psilocybin as represented in the study and in my own you know personal stuff and it kind of jumps around it doesn't really contain itself onto the study and it doesn't contain itself on just comparisons between LSD and psilocybin but it kind of floats around in that zone. So it's not my most coherent YouTube video, but the information still feels positive, which is why I'm still going to release it uh, to you. So let's jump back into that video. Actually, one more thing. Big thanks to Ryan Hollinger, fellow YouTuber who I do not know personally, who gave me the idea for this particular frame, you know, showing the 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 post-production in the side note he's got a great channel that deconstructs horror films unrelated i just like the guy go check him out i'll link him in the description below now back to my video about lsd and psilocybin so the study uses a series of questionnaires to measure the subjectively rated qualities of experience of 16 healthy volunteers who took 200 micrograms of lsd eight of which were women and eight of which were men I'll just read their final conclusion so you get a general sense of what the, uh, what the research suggests, is that after one year, a single LSD experience produced personal meaning and enhanced well-being, which were subjectively attributed to the LSD experience, but no relevant changes in measures of personality traits. What I found interesting is a few factors, one of which is that they compared what they saw qualitatively in uh, subjective reports between the LS people taking LSD as well as the established research around people who have taken psilocybin. And in that, there's a point here that's interesting, that there's no relevant changes in measures of personality traits with LSD, whereas with the psilocybin, there is the report that there's a long-lasting change in personality in the domain of openness, both of which LSD and psilocybin seem to produce long-lasting positive impacts insofar as personal meaning and personal well-being, but psilocybin seems to produce this change in personality. An interesting note here when they were comparing psilocybin and LSD is that they noticed that uh, psilocybin has a greater likelihood of producing fear response in participants than LSD at like similarly intense doses. They say here, quote, 17 of of overall, 17 of the overall 54 participants in the psilocybin studies also reported strong or extreme fear sometime during the session after administration of psilocybin at this dose. Whereas they didn't seem to have that impact with LSD, which I think is cool considering that if you talk to people who have taken a lot of both, there seems to be a common meme or a common theme that LSD is a little bit easier to handle than psilocybin. That outside of, say, poor choices in set, setting, dose, contact, etc., uh, LSD is just a little bit easier to manage, whereas psilocybin always seems to bring on some level of discomfort. And, and to me, this is where the positive impact of psilocybin is present, because it's the facing and the, the embodiment of those uncomfortable, fearful, painful aspects of ourself inside of a safe relational container that's infused with the magic and beauty that's present, or presently potential in a psilocybin experience that can be so positively impactful on a person's state of well-being over time. Which kind of ties into what's interesting about psilocybin and the research about psilocybin, which, you know, is, is easily quoted by saying like, oh yeah, you know, this, the, <laughs> the title of the research says, you know, psilocybin increases the personality domain of openness and has these positive lasting benefits and that it's in relationship to a mystical type experience that we see correlations of positive changes in mood and personality. But when they do this, um, comparisons here, what they suggest is that the openness changes in psilocybin don't actually occur right afterwards. They're not actually even measurable until 14 months after the initial dose, which is interesting to consider that psilocybin's changes in personality 
emerge out of the long term and not as an immediate consequence of the psilocybin itself, which is a theme that carries through for the rest of this um, paper, which I think is also an incredibly important theme for us to consider as people who use psilocybin and people who use psychedelics in general, which is that changes in personality and even changes in positive well-being are not necessarily innate to the substance experiences themselves, but in the pre-established assumptions as to what the experience can offer us and the manner in which we live our lives afterwards. So for example, when they're referencing one of Roland Griffith's studies around hallucinogen-induced mystical type experiences, it showed that not only is it dose dependent that those mystical type experiences emerge, but the actual long-lasting positive changes from those experiences are really deeply influenced by how the people conduct themselves afterwards on either side of the experience. Let me read here. Higher rates of meditation, spiritual practice, or greater support for spiritual practice also increased positive long-term effects compared with a group that received psilocybin but less spiritual support. In this study, spiritual practice suggestions to all participants included 10 to 30 minutes of daily meditation, awareness practice, journaling, and other activities personally judged to facilitate spiritual growth. Their suggestion here, as far as I can understand, is that, and I agree, it's not actually the drug itself or even the experience that it offers acutely that creates the long-term positive change. It's actually what we do with that experience, how we set ourselves up to have it, so the context in which we approach it, as well as how we integrate it into our lives afterwards. Insofar as how we set it up, having a pre-established expectation for some sort of positive change, which is why I believe that... Um, it's so important to have an understanding when taking psilocybin, for example, of how positive the uncomfortable experiences can be. And I've talked about that in other videos and, it, and it's extensively written in my book, so I'll just kind of leave it there. But having this pre-established expectation that everything that we go through within the psychedelic experience can have a positive impact really sets the stage for how the experience manifests, as well as how we will uh, approach bringing those experiences into a, our, our daily sober sense of self over the long term, which will then contribute to you know, positive lasting benefits. They say here, quote, high MEX scores also after placebo were observed in settings that, settings that involved more spiritual practice to support, and these scores and associated long-term changes may partly reflect those settings and not the effects of the psilocybin per se. Another interesting comparison is that going back to talking how psilocybin and the positive impacts of psilocybin seem to be associated with the sense of having a mystical type experience, like the level of mystical experience is directly correlated to the level of personal outcome, it's, or personal betterment in the outcome, it seems to suggest here that this is the correlation with psilocybin, but the correlation with LSD to the long-term beneficial outcome is not necessarily the mystical experience, but the degree of alteration of consciousness. Now, I, I could be totally misunderstanding this, so I would love it if you could comment in the description below this video to correct me where I'm wrong, um, but it appears to suggest that the positive benefits of LSD are not associated with that sense of mystical communion, but actually associated with how basically how completely out of your normal state of consciousness you go. Quote, similar to previous studies with psilocybin and healthy subjects, the present study found that long-term effects of LSD were associated with the extent of the, of the acute response to LSD. However, the overall alterations of mind, reflected by the 5D ASC scores, better predicted the long-term effects of LSD compared to assessments of the more specific acute mystical type experience, such as MS total acute scores or MQ, MEQ30 scores. Thus, the present findings indicate that the overall alterations in consciousness that are acutely induced by LSD may contribute to LSD's lasting positive effects in normal subjects and in patients. So I really like reading, uh, you know, scientific papers. And I found this one to be really interesting, like I said, especially with the comparison between LSD and psilocybin. Although I felt a little disappointed because one of the things that I was really hoping to get when I read this was an exploration or a, 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 an investigation into how LSD actually changes a person's perception of reality. They suggest that there was no negative you know, there, there was no negative results from taking the LSD according to the survey levels, that there was no significant changes in sort of negative uh, 
quality of life or negative thought patterns or behaviors after the LSD compared to before the LSD. And they suggest that there was no flashbacks, which usually is, uh, I think, sort of misrepresented as as all of a sudden you're on LSD again, when it might actually just be like, oh, uh, you know, an intrusive effective state and a series of stories around that effective state that result from being traumatized by LSD experience and it's not the drug itself but it's the trauma just like trauma manifests in all sorts of ways outside of specifically being hallucinogens but what I was hoping for was not so much about the flashbacks but how does it change visual perception how does it change one's experience of the world and and maybe this is what they were suggesting when they said that in the present study, we observe a lasting increase in scores on the DTS mysticism subscale, indicating an increase in mystical experiences, which is consistent with increases in lifetime mystical experiences on the MS, but no effects on the other subscale. So I don't know if what they're suggesting here is that people are more likely after taking LSD to have mystical type experiences or feel as though they have some sort of greater mystical communion with things. Um, but I wonder about that being the case. Of course, it would not be the case for everyone. As it suggests in this study, it's really less about the drug and the experience, but how the experience is set up, the context in which the drug is taken, and then what is done with that experience afterwards in the form of our own integration practices, particularly around how we incorporate spirituality into that. But what I'm curious is about, and maybe I'm not the only one here, is I find that after taking LSD, especially immediately after, but then for some time after, it really has changed my perception of the world. It's really changed how I see color, shape, how I hear sound, and how I respond to things like the wind blowing the leaves through the trees. And that in and of itself has been something that I'm very curious about, like how many other people have had these visual alterations, like fundamental changes in how we visually see the world, interpret the various factors of stimuli that then become, you know, what we see. It, they didn't talk about that, but maybe they did and I didn't understand it. Either way, this is an excellent study. Uh, I will put a link in the description below for you to read it in fullness. And please do correct me where you feel like I am wrong in my interpretations, um, as well as please contribute your thoughts on, on essentially how has LSD positively impacted your life or has it negatively impacted your life? Do you agree with the differences between psilocybin and LSD as they're suggested here in this article? Do you find LSD easier to handle than psilocybin? Really, any thoughts that you have, comment in the description below. This channel is really about creating discourse and creating content that can work as an anchor around which discourse can happen because I really feel that intelligent discourse is extremely important. Some construction happening around me now in this quick. Thank you for listening. Check me out on Patreon. Uh, that's how this channel is funded. You could also leave me a one-time PayPal donation or buy some blotter art, which is available in my store. You can find everything in the description below this video or at jameswgesso.com. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.